Welcome to our lecture online. What if they give you the following information? They tell us that we have a geometric series. The first term is equal to 3. The common ratio is 1 half. And suppo we're supposed to find the fifth term or the fifth number in the series, the partial sum of the first five numbers, and then the infinite sum. All right, let's do that. We need to know the equation of the way to find the end number in the series. So we know that a sub n is equal to a sub 1 times r to the n minus 1 power. Alright, let's plug in and see what we get. So in this case, uh, we can say that a sub 5 is equal to a sub 1 times the common ratio, which is 1 half, raised to the 5 minus 1 power. And of course, a1 is the number that's given to us that was equal to number 3. Okay, so this is equal to 3 times 1 half to the 4th power, which is equal to 3 times 1 half. Well, let's see, we can take the 4th power of 1 half. That would be 1 over 16. And so this is equal to 3 divided by 16. Let's see if that was correct. Let's plug in what we think the series is. So in this case, the series is equal to the first number is 3. Then the next number is a half times 3, which would be plus 3 over 2. The next number would be half of that, which would be 3 over 4. The next number would be 3 over 8. And the next number would be 3 over 16. And that's what we got. So we got the right number there. How about the sum of the first five terms? We can say that uh, s sub n is equal to a sub 1 times 1 minus r to the n power divided by 1 minus r. So that means that s of the first five terms, the sum of the first five terms, is the first term, which is 3, times 1 minus the common ratio, which is 1 half, raised to the n power, which in this case is 5, divided by 1 minus the common ratio, which is 1 half. Okay, simplifying that, this is equal to the number 3 times 1 minus 1 half to the fifth power, that would be 1 minus 1 over 32, divided by 1 minus a half, which is 1 half. 3 divided by 1 half, well, that would be 6, right? Because you multiply by the inverse, so this would be equal to 6 times 1 minus 1 over 32. So now we need to find the common denominator. So this is equal to 6 times 32 minus 1 over 32, like this. And so that would be 6 times 31 over 32. And 6 and 32, that they're both even, so that would be uh, 16. This would be 3. And so that would be equal to 91 divided by 16. And that would be the sum of the first six terms. You can check that by simply adding the first, six, uh, the first five terms together. This is S of 5. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. Let's check it to see if it is correctly. The common denominator is 16, so that would be 48 over 16, plus 2, that's 8, that's 24 over 16, plus that would be 12, 4 times 3, which is 12 over 16. Uh, that would be equal to 6 over 16, plus 3 over 16. All right, so that's equal to 48, that's 68, that's 72, 82, 84, 90, 93 over 16. And sure enough, that is the number that we derived over there. Finally, we need to find the infinite sum, S infinite sum. That is equal to, the general term is, remember, r to the n power that becomes equal to 0 when r is less than 1 and n goes to infinity. So this would be a sub 1 divided by 1 minus r. So in this case, a sub 1 is 3 divided by 1 minus the common ratio is 1 half. So this is equal to 3 divided by 1 half. And so that's equal to 6. The total sum of all the terms out to infinity add up to 6. And that is how it's done. Yes, it does.